So there is a case, I believe it's from Louisiana, that's going to be heard in December before the Supreme Court, and it's got the potential to overturn Roe versus Wade. Tell us what's going on. It does. I represent an amazing client whose name is Melinda Tebow, and she's the founder of the Moral Outcry Petition. And she was the pro-life prayer initiative leader, one of them at International House of Prayer in Kansas City. And as she was praying one day, she saw in her mind or saw in a vision, perhaps she saw a, a, a petition being rolled out to the Supreme Court like Wilberforce did in the movie Amazing Grace. And she prayed into it. She called me and said, Alan, has anybody ever sent a petition to the Supreme Court? And I said, well, not that I know of. And she said, could it be done? And I said, Yes, I think it could be done. There's no rule that says you can't do it. And as a citizen of the United States, you have the right to petition your government for redress of grievances. Right. And who created this grievance? It wasn't the states. Most of them made it a crime to have an abortion. It wasn't Congress. It was the United States Supreme Court alone which decriminalized what should be a crime. And in fact, so we, we started the, what it basically does, the petition answers the question legally, why should Roe v. Wade be reversed? And it gives everybody in America the opportunity to do something. Because in an amazing occurrence, uh, Justices Kavanaugh and Gorsuch have co-authored a book called The Law of Judicial Precedent. And one of the reasons for overturning a Supreme Court decision, if it has been severely criticized, and so calling abortion a crime against humanity, which it is, is severe criticism. And having half a million people, which is what we've got now, that is a major block of people expressing their opinion to the court. It carries great weight under the law of judicial precedent itself.